Okay, so what I'm going to do is show a demo on QuickQuery and how you can use QuickQuery to create custom APIs for your customers, your trading partners, your employees, or whoever needs to be able to get access from uh, Dynamics SL or any SQL Server uh, database for that matter, but be able to get data and be, be able to get it in a secure and specific fashion, meaning that you can go ahead and set up um, a data feed that's only going to bring back the information that you want to give the, the whoever's calling this API um, so that they get exactly what they need. So um, I'm going to do something with QuickQuery. Uh, the Catalina Integrator Tools has a, a a front end to QuickQuery that allows you to use uh, standard QuickQuery from Dynamics SL and be able to um, retrieve data, create custom filters and that type of thing, and then be able to do one of two things. One, one is that the output of a quick query could automatically go to another API. And I'll show you a little bit like that. And, and, and that quick query could be scheduled on a job so that what we would do is create this quick query definition. It would go ahead and retrieve data automatically from SL in the way you want, and then automatically map it and send it to an API, like say Amazon Marketplace or uh, to eBay or to your time entry system if you need to go ahead and integrate and synchronize projects and tasks and things like that. So it, it's it's pretty powerful. So that's one way to do things. And that's not what I'm going to show you today. But the other thing that I'm going to show you is the way to be able to go ahead and open up Dynamics SL or any SQL Server database so that others can access it. So first, I'm going to go into QuickQuery, and this is a uh, Catalina's QuickQuery um, tool, and it allows me to go ahead and create what we call QuickQuery definitions. I've got a few that are already here. Um, I could look at one of these uh, definitions, and uh, this example here goes ahead and retrieves inventory items from the standard inventory item QuickQuery view, and then does a custom filter and we can save that custom filter so it can be run over and over and over and over again and and so in this case I'm I'm looking at user one and any any inventory item that has the value of eBay we want to be able to then send it out to eBay and so we've got the send results to uh, we've got a whole different bunch these are all uh, definable uh, so you can add your own you can tweak them uh, and basically what these are are ways to send data to a uh, uh, another API and do custom data mapping. So th this is just an example of how you could send inventory to say eBay or something like that. But what we want to do is create a new query definition to do something useful. And what this will do is this will allow us to open up our database uh, in a secure fashion to others that say, I need access to your data. And the example I'm going to show today is, say you've got a customer. That customer has a purchasing system, and they want to be able to retrieve data from you, uh, say, for any invoice uh, that has a balance due that's over 30 days, and they want to be able to go and retrieve that and get it into their uh into their system. So they're asking you, hey, can you give me an endpoint or a location of an API that when we call that, it'll retrieve just the data we want. So I'm going to go ahead and just do just that. I'm going to go ahead and choose an existing quick query uh, that's in the system. Let's say AR invoices and credits. And So I'm just going to give it a name. And this is just something that I typed in. Now I could go ahead and send the results if your customer does have, or trading partner, whoever has an API that you could send this to and you needed to map it. We can certainly go ahead and then take the results of this, automatically map it and send it to another API and schedule this and it'll run over and over again. But we're not going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and now create some filters. And these are custom filters. You can add them and then save them so that when your whoever's trying to call this API will call using that custom filter. So I'm going to add a filter and uh, let me just retrieve my um, list. 
and let me go ahead and say I want to bring back everything for CT010. Yeah, for, for just so that this one customer would be able to go ahead and get that. Um, so I've got that. And if I view my query results, what that's going to do is bring back all invoices for CT0100. And you can see here, this is the customer ID right here on the one, two, three, four, fifth column. And it brings back everything. If I delete that and I view my query results, it's going to bring back er for everything. So we really want to be able to go ahead and make this so that it only will come back for um, CTO 10 So you can see here, it's bringing back for all my customers uh, here. So you can see C400 or 4100, uh, C300 or whatever. So let's just go and put that back and put in customer ID equals CTO 10 Okay. Now let me go ahead and add something else. I'm going to add a filter that, let's say, we're going to only bring back. Um, items that are within a certain date range. So if I go ahead and look at due date, and let me just first go ahead and bring back everything from the last 30 days. So if I put in something here, um, what you see here is this looks like code, and it kind of is, but um, what this allows you to do is not have to go ahead and, and say, okay, what's the current date? I And what's minus? 30. This will automatically do that. So you don't have to go ahead and deal with uh, your customer putting in a date range or anything like that. You're going to give them exactly what you want. So I'm just putting this in. Now, this is just an example. We can do all kinds of things. And if I hit is eval, what this is going to do is it's going to bring back everything for, for CT0100 that has uh, a due date that's within the last 30 days. And you can see I've got uh, three three results back so i've only got a few items that are back so that's that's great uh so if your customer did want his la uh, their last 30 days of invoices that'd be great let's say they wanted to go ahead and have anything that was older than 30 days um we can do that as well so it's it's really simple to be able to go ahead and add as many filters as you want be able to do um so i've got 100 rows that have come back and you can see all of this um and let me just add one more because let me go ahead and say that i want um the document balance that's discount balance Here we go. Document balance is greater than zero. So, oops, that's nine. <laughs> there we go. So I'm going to bring back everything that has document balance of greater than zero because I don't want to go ahead and bring back all of the all of these that are already been paid. All I care about are new invoices. Um, so I hit view res view results. And I should I got 45 rows back, so I'm getting everything that has a balance and is older than 30 days. So let me go ahead and just save that. And so that's great. Now I've got a way to be able to go ahead and create a query. If I go back to my list and I go ahead and say get whatever, I can go and run this in a nice little web interface and be able to view my query results. I could uh, I could also send them to another API and have it map and, and all that stuff. But what's more important is I now want to be able to go ahead and give somebody else access to this. So um, we have these things called API keys. And an API key is nothing more than security that allows uh, another process, like a client process or another system, to be able to go ahead and get this data. Um, so what that will do is it'll go ahead and bring it back. So I've got several a uh, several different API keys defined here, but I can define all kinds of API keys. And you can define as many as you want. So I'm going into API keys management, and I'm going to create a new API key. Um, I could go ahead and make it very tough to go ahead and deal with, like this guy here, B blah, 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 blah. And I can create a funky secret key. So it's basically a username and password uh, for 
something that calls an API and Okay, so I just did that. And so I've now gone ahead and just simply created a new API key in the system. So if I go back to my quick query and I look at this, I can then be able to go ahead and give access. So this is my filters that I've got here and I don't have any API keys. You can see the assigned API keys for this resource, not there. So what I can now look is I can see, okay, here's my API keys. I want to give this API key access. And I can give as many API keys as I want. Say I want to also give, say, this one access. I can do that. And so you can go ahead and give uh, multiple users access to this so that they can go ahead and get access, you know, grab the data. I don't want this guy. Um, and I just remove that. And so now what you do is you're going to say, okay, well, how am I going to get this information to my customer? So I just go ahead and click on this get code. And what this will do is this will provide code that an API person would know how to go ahead and deal with. So I'm, I'm going to, this is, this is kind of API code here that you can just send to whoever needs to go ahead and do that. But I want to go ahead and give them also their secret key added to that as well. So it will automatically create the code for me, automatically put it in the appropriate format and I can just click on copy that code. Now I'm going to go ahead and minimize um, the screen here first and now I'm going to bring up a tool called Postman which is a, an example of what a, a, a client like a customer or somebody might use to be able to retrieve data from an API. So I'm going to go ahead and just import that code. I paste that raw text like that I import it. So now what it's done is it's brought back all this information here and now allows me to get what I need out of this. So it's got my header, it's got all kinds of stuff. And if I hit just send, it will then bring back the actual data. So I've, I've now got an API and you can see all this data that's in here. And that's all I had to do is I sent my, you know, I could send my customer that little code snippet and now they can go ahead and get data securely. If you want to easily go ahead and then um, get them out of your system, you can certainly do that to oh, wrong screen. Let me go ahead and bring up that screen. So let's say I want to remove this guy. Say I, that this the service no longer should be calling my uh, system. I go ahead and remove that, and now it's gone. And if I go back to this and I hit send, what it does is now says that I'm on unauthorized. So super super simple uh, way to be able to go ahead and give somebody else access to your system through an API that you don't have to do any programming for. You just use something as simple as quick query and you're off to the races. I uh, hope this helped. If you've got any questions, feel free to contact us, sales at catalinatechnology.com uh, and uh, look forward to talking to you. Thanks a lot.